Do you hate it when you go on a website, whether it be for the first time or you just cleared your cookies and what have you, and you've got to click agree, or you've got to go into the depth of the, uh, the little pop-up and what have you, and scroll down, find out, but yeah, don't collect my data. Yeah, it's irritating, isn't it? But equally, it's important that you do so. Don't collect my data. Because that data, well, it builds a picture about you. Might be a little bit of data here, a little bit of data there, but a little bit of data up, then all of a sudden, they, well, they know you're inside the leg. Measurement, probably. But it's your data, and data is the new gold. Why the hell should corporations be profiteering off information about you? About your habits, and the things that you like, and the things that you do, the places you've been, where's your location, blah, 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 blah. The list goes on. What gives them the right to do that? Well, you, you clicked OK, haven't you? You just agreed and closed without saying, don't collect my data. But even if you do that, in many cases, your data is still being collected and used against you. It's not conspiracy theory. No. It's happening every single day. And what they're doing is they're building up an image about your behaviour. Now, most people... He's got nothing to hide. I've got nothing to hide. I don't particularly care. I do a YouTube channel. I pretty much tell you everything. But it's just... It's, why the hell should corporations be using that to profiteer? I, I'm not. They're not paying me. No. They're paying you? No. Not at all. Well, one US uh, vendor has been accused of violating the GDPR. And obviously is the European... Um, right, basically regulations regarding online safety in you know for EU member states because you know they like to look after the EU member states the citizens of that's their job it is a protection a protection the uh, well block isn't it it's there to protect us people that's the whole point I know the Brexiters will say oh my giddy aunt it's tyranny or something like that <laughs> well there's a company called Telesign in the United States. There's also got a Belgium company, is a sort of parent company as well. And they've pretty much done everything they can to, well, against the GDPR. They've abused it, which means they've abused your rights and your safety. It goes deeper than that, so carry on watching. So anyway, the US fraud, wait for it, fraud prevention company, yeah, well, it's in hot water over allegations it's not collect, that it not only collected data for millions of EU citizens and processed it using automated tools, but um, also without their permission or knowledge. Yeah, so they literally just stole it. But, that's, but they did so, they've done it in the United States, and it all, it all violates the EU's data protection, you know, the GDPR. Now... Telesign have been taken to court by uh, another institution. Now, in its complaint, an auto, uh, well, an English version of, of the complaint, actually, um, because obviously it's from, from the EU, uh, NOYOB, N O Y B, I don't know what it stands for, but there you go, it alleges that the Telesign is in violation of the GDPR's provisions that ban the use of automated profiling tools as well as rules that require affirmative consent. In other words, when you press that, you know, the OK button. Or, you know, this is the thing I hate about the BBC at the moment. I hate, lo I hate lots of things about the BBC. But actually, what was researching this, so I look on the, the BBC website, and I've got the little box come up, and because uh, I claim my cookies quite re regularly, you see. So I've obviously been on the BBC quite a few times. Anyway, so I went in there, and I, I you know, I'm not going to disagree to every thing. No, it didn't give me an option on the first window. You have to go down and you have to go into it and, you know, and actually click on the su little sub button, that'll be a little button at the bottom, and then you can go in and then choose. Don't collect my data. That is just, it's another level of hassle. How many people just click, oh, I've got them to hide, agree and close? No, don't do it. Really don't do it. They're profiling you. It's not okay. It really is not okay. You might think it's okay now, but what happens when they've got that data in the future and things change? Look what's happening in the United Kingdom at the moment. It's turning into a fascist country. It really is. Well, countries. Well, actually, it's just England, really. No, it's actually Westminster. Come to that. Yeah. Anyway, it's another story. So, um, Teddy Sign's corporate uh, parentage and history of its behaviour. Now, 
what they're trying to do is they're, they're digging in deeper now to find out what's going on here and basically being investigated. Now, the BICS acquired Telesign back in 2017. Um, it began to fail, so they found it began to fail under the partial control of BICS parent company in Belgium. It's, it's basically, uh, I don't know if you know, it's a big telecoms company. And uh, it's, what, what's it called again? It's Proximus, I think it is Proximus, is it? Maybe someone can tell me. Anyway, Proximus, if it is the right name, it held a partial stake in the BICS, which Proximus uh, spun, up, sp spun off from its own operations in back 1997. Back in 2021, though, Proximus bought out BICS and other shareholders, making it the sole owner of both the Telecom Interchange and Telesign. And with that in mind, the NOYB is also levelling charges against Proximus and BICS in its complaint, saying that basically they're stealing your data, going against the GDPR. Well, I can imagine the GDPR, yeah, as in the European Union, is also going to start investigating this. Now it's been, um, you know, made, well, it's been, in, well, come to light. I can imagine some massive fines coming their way. Massive, usually 6% of turnover. You can imagine that. Not, not on profit, but on turnover. Yeah, uh, what well, it's up to, but you could, yeah, it could be near that anyway, it depends really. So complaints were also given that the information they requested, says NOYB, and claims that what was handed over was simply a template copy of the EU's standard contractual, ish, contractual clause, and you know, part of the, the GDPR, which has been used by businesses transmitting data between the EU and the US. While the pair try to work out data transfer rules, uh, Schrems won't get struck down in court. No. In addition in, to this article, 50 allegations um, of, te you know, of Telesign and Altme Proximus by virtue of its ownership of the company and also accused of violating the GDPR's SCC rules by carrying out a subsequent transfer that does not comply with the contractual obligations. No. If you want to trade online uh, with anything with it regarding, uh, you know, citizens of the European Union's uh, data, when well, you have to comply by the GDPR, and they haven't. They've been stealing your data. So they violated the GDPR by transferring data without appropriate safeguards to protect it. Now, even me, with my little old websites and stuff like that, I have to put disclaimers up and all sorts of stuff. And the little window, you, got, you know, at the beginning of the websites, it's, you know, you've got to do it up so you can get fined. There's a minimum fine, or, you know, and it goes into, uh, well, it can go into well, excessive amounts of money. Imagine what Twitter's got to deal with. <laughs> so um, then, while NOYB is seeking a cessation uh, of all the data transfers from BICS to Telesign, processing of said data, and is requesting deletion of, of all unlawfully transmitted data. The problem is, much of this data has already been sold. That's a can of worms, that one. Um, yeah, uh, to Belgium Data Protection Authorities to fine Proximus. <sighs> it could reach as much as 236 million euros. It's about 257 million dollars. Uh, yeah, and that would be about 4% in this case, apparently, of Proximus global turnover. Now, my point is, I know I'm running on a bit, uh, going into detail on, on that case, but the thing is, it's our data. And we as individuals do not do enough to protect it. We really have to start being a, oh, okay, you get VPNs and stuff like that. To help prevent, you know, your IP being shared or, you know, your location and stuff like that, or where you've been, your, your history and all that sort of stuff. As far as you know, it's not being collected. It's probably being collected by the actual companies you're getting the service from, to be fair. Um, and now you've got the online safety bill, which is going to make it very difficult for companies to be able to protect you from, yeah, because they also want to collect your data, your habits. They want to scan everything you say. And people say silly stuff, you know. All of a sudden, you're going to get someone knocking on your door, putting the handcuffs on you, pushing you to the floor and what have you, and uh, so you get investigated. There's some very tall, stocky woman with some rubber gloves on. Maybe. <laughs> oh, God. 
Anyway, I think it's all very worried, and I don't know about you. What do you do um, to protect your, you know, self from online and boost? And I'm not talking about in chat rooms and stuff like that. I mean, by these corporations and protecting your data. Please leave it in the comments down below. Maybe what support channel you do on Patreon or buys a coffee, and the links are down below. I think this is actually really serious, and people need to wake up. Seriously, need to wake up. It's getting very dangerous now. Yeah. You've been profiled. Oh, oh dear. Ta-ta. Have a lovely day.